Vault 92 was officially opened with the intention of keeping art alive in a post-apocalyptic world, with the country's greatest artistic talents invited to become residents. In reality, the vault was created with a far more nefarious reason in mind. White noise generators were scattered throughout the vault, implanting subliminal messages in the minds of the vault dwellers. These messages were intended to turn the residents into super soldiers who would be totally obedient and fight with added ferocity. According to the recordings found by the player in Fallout 3, one resident began demonstrating intense aggression, ultimately tearing apart three people before being taken down by over 20 gunshots. Despite the vault's overseer being initially happy with these results, half of the population quickly became similarly unstable and uncontrollable, with a predictably horrific this outcome. Was one of our most successful implant recipients, able to execute complex instructions during a trance state. Vault 34 came with a large number of recreational amenities, including a swimming pool, as well as an overstocked armory. However, this was at the expense of living space, leading to the facility becoming quickly overpopulated. Many of the residents soon began demanding access to the weapons in the armory, but were denied by the overseer. In the ensuing riots, a group of dwellers were able to escape, resulting in the entrance being fully sealed. Soon though, it emerged that the radioactive gases had been leaking in, due to infrastructure damage and the vault door was now inoperable. With no means of escape, the remaining inhabitants were either all killed or became feral ghouls. Ironically, Vault 34 dweller Chris Havisham left the facility after incorrectly believing he had been turned into a ghoul due to his work maintaining the reactor. It was due to his vacancy that the reactor malfunctioned and turned the vault into a radiation-filled nightmare. Vault 108 had a number of bizarre oddities that took place within its walls. Most notably, the vault contained a cloning facility, along with the usual amenities. However, there was also an elaborate experiment that led to a total collapse of the vault's population. The first overseer of Vault 108 went into the vault knowing that he was expected to die within 40 months of entering the facility. The experiment was researching conflict for leadership, and as such, no authority positions were assigned to the general residents of the vault. On top of this, the power supply was intended to fail after 240 months, no entertainment was given, and there was an excessively stocked armory. The cloning experiments also quickly got out of hand, with each clone having an extremely violent temperament towards non-clones. By the time the player reaches the vault, only clones are left alive inside, eerily, each clone can only say one word. Gary. One of the more memorable locations from Fallout 3, Vault 112 that housed virtual reality pods. These pods were designed to suspend the 85 inhabitants in a virtual utopia until the vault's opening. However, thanks to the actions of Overseer Stanislaus Braun, this was sadly not the case. Braun became mad with power, gaining something of a god complex. By the time the player reaches Vault 112, the inhabitants have become Braun's playthings, trapped in an endless, sadistic virtual cycle. Rather than allowing everyone to live in a perfect utopia as originally planned, Braun took control over the simulations, creepily taking on the persona of a little girl named Betty. Hi there! Braun has been psychologically torturing his fellow residents before wiping the virtual worlds and booting ah. up new ones. The player is able to permanently kill the dwellers to free them from the nightmare, and also has the option of trapping Braun in his simulations, alone forever. You can't do that here, and now you have to pay. The pint sized slasher! The pint sized slasher! Someone. Ah!
Vault 22 was designed to be an experiment on self-sufficiency, with a focus on the plants keeping the vault's population alive. However, while initially successful, there were some gruesome side effects that later marked the vault as a place to avoid at all costs. The plants released fungus spores which infected many of the inhabitants. This led to the fungus taking over the body, killing the host and becoming a deadly humanoid creature called a spore carrier. These spore carriers initially appeared as normal humans who would walk around spraying spores and infecting further victims. However, they soon took on a more plant-like appearance with a ferocity matching that of the feral ghouls. Vault 22 was all but abandoned by the remaining survivors and the vault is surrounded by dozens of warning messages. Horrifically, the player can come across a number of small spore carriers, suggesting that many of the victims were babies and infants. Vault 106 was another facility that was constructed with a specific experiment in mind. This time, it was with regards to psychoactive drugs and their effect on an enclosed community. Ten days after the vault was closed, vaporous hallucinative drugs were continuously pumped into the air. The overseer assured the population there was no problem and the facility swiftly descended into insanity. When the player encounters the vault, there are still drugs being pumped through the filtration system, causing strange hallucinations. There are some vault residents who are miraculously still alive, though they are totally mad and attack the player on sight. The drugs in the air can also be thanked for this delightful poem discovered near the overseer's office. Scribbledy bibbledy hoodly ho Wing wang brick a bang choo 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 Upside popsicle tastes like blue Ghosts in the hall go boo 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 First mistake Oh! Mistake Vault 77 never appeared in any of the games, instead being featured in the official Fallout webcomic series. While many of the other vault experiments involved overpopulation and crowding, Vault 77 was inhabited by just one man. For months, the man bashed on the vault door, assuming that more vault dwellers were on their way. Soon he discovered that he had been left with a crate of puppets, which he later gave names and personalities. Becoming quite mad due to the prolonged isolation, he invented a whole life based around the puppets, even becoming embroiled in a murder mystery involving the death of one puppet. Eventually, the Vault 77 dweller managed to escape and entered the wilderness. After being captured by slavers, he managed to kill both of them while wearing a Vault Boy puppet earning him the nickname Puppet Man. Responsible for much of the chaos in the capital wasteland, Vault 87 was an important part of the Enclave's experiments. After entering, the inhabitants of the vault were forced into airtight chambers and exposed to the forced evolutionary virus. The virus transformed the inhabitants into a number of horrific creatures, most notably the super mutants and centaurs. Retaining much of their intelligence, but becoming extremely aggressive, the super mutants became enamored with their new species, obsessing over how to preserve it. The virus ensured that the super Super mutants were totally infertile, with no means to add or expand their species beyond exposing others to the virus. Therefore, the capital wasteland has been subject to numerous kidnappings and raids as the super mutants carry away humans to mutate and look for new sources of the virus. Vault 11 was a well-stocked, sizable facility with no drugs being pumped throughout the air or deadly plants that could infect everyone. Instead, it was part of a horrifying experiment that pitted the choices of mortality and morality against each other. Upon arriving at the vault, the inhabitants were told they must sacrifice one vault dweller to the computer each year, or everyone would be killed. The decision process was settled by a democratic voting system, and for many years, people lived relatively comfortably, beyond the burden of the human sacrifices. The voting also also led to the formation of several blocks, whose members would influence the elections heavily. The most powerful block, named the Justice Block, one year threatened a resident named Catherine Stone into performing sexual favours for their members. In exchange, they wouldn't vote for her husband, Nathan Stone, to be sacrificed. Although she complied, they voted for Nathan Stone anyway. 
In retaliation, Catherine Stone began murdering members of the Justice Block, confessed to her crimes, and got elected as both the Sacrifice and the Overseer of the Vault. As her first act as Overseer, she replaced the voting system with a randomized lottery. The Blocks, unhappy with their power loss, staged an armed coup that resulted in only five survivors. The five survivors decided to commit suicide together by defying the computer and refusing to sacrifice any one person. It was then they made the terrible discovery that this was exactly what the computer wanted, and they'd been living a sickening lie. It emerged that in the case of defiance, the computer would congratulate Vault 11's populace on their selflessness and allow them to leave the vault if they wished. Audio files discovered by the player indicates that upon this discovery, four of the five survivors decided to commit suicide anyway. The remaining Vault 11 survivor's identity has never been revealed. You can't do that here. And now you have to pay. Did we miss any creepy vault facts? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and enjoy the game.